Hello everyone. Welcome to the Hens Fickle podcast. This is episode four and I'm Jacqueline and I'm from a small town just outside Edinburgh in Scotland. To returning viewers, welcome back. And if you're a new viewer, you're very welcome and I hope you'll enjoy this episode. Normally, I'm presenting this episode with my daughter but she's gone for her flu jab today so she may not be feeling so well afterwards so I'll soldier on best I can um, it's been a busy two weeks the past two weeks I've been doing a lot of dyeing we've both been spinning and working on customer orders but we've enjoyed doing it and it's what we like to do Apart from our, our busy fortnight, one of the dogs was very ill and that was a worry. However, she's on the mend now. She took a very bad doggy virus and she's also prone to pancreatitis. So the two hand in hand made her quite ill and she spent two nights in the vet hospital on a drip. So she's needed a lot of care when she came home. But happily, she's on the mend and she's back to her old usual. Today we'll start with finished objects. I have quite a few, well, about three or four. And the first one that I finished, because it's getting a bit colder here, I thought hats are going to be a necessity. So, I don't suit hats. I definitely don't suit beanies, that's for sure. So I was looking for an alternative to a hat that I could possibly wear. And one I saw on Ravelry was this one. And it's called the Perfect Berry. And I thought, I quite like the shape of that. So I'll try this one. And this was hand spun yarn that I had spun from a John Arban fibre blend um, and this one is called Dabinet. they're named after apple varieties so I thought right this was intended for socks but when I saw this berry I thought okay maybe this would be better so this is the one that I've done I'm not going to model it just now I might do afterwards um, it's absolutely perfect it was so easy to do a tutu rib I can't, I can't remember if it was a tutu rib on the pattern but I like tutu rib and you just knit plain up and then you start decreasing. Although the pom pom is actually making that a bit difficult to see. And then you just gather it all in and on goes the pom pom. But prior to that I b blocked it by soaking in soak. I think it was the soak wash and then I stretched it over a dinner plate left it to dry and perfect it's the perfect shape um, I've tried it on and I quite like it it's certainly better for me than a beanie so that was my first finished object second finished object was another hat and this one is absolutely brilliant and I will put it on because I love it. I suppose it is a beanie shape but it's such a big bulky hat. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's me. And this massive great pom-pom on the top just drapes over. And this is a crochet hat. So this is by, let me see who's this by. Um, this is the Snowboarder hat by Marley Bird. Where did I see that? I saw that on YouTube and I'm not sure if it's a paid pattern or not. I'll look that up and leave the links in the notes. And but it's absolutely fantastic and look at this massive great pom pom. Marley Bird shows you how to do everything and it's a very quick crochet. It's crocheted from one side round to the other 
um, and it's a lovely big hat which I suit much better than a skin tight beanie. So that was a, a brilliant um, crochet and I bought two, oh yes it's double chunky, you use two ends of chunky yarn. So I think my, this, my one took less than 200 grams and that that was fine, it knitted, it well, crocheted up in, I think it was, I did it over one night and then finished it off the next morning, so it's very quick. The yarn I use is acrylic and it's, I don't know if we can see that, it's called Big Value, just from the local yarn shop and I thought I'll use a sort of cheaper yarn just to try it out, see how it works and then if I quite like how it how it's doing I'll spin up some yarn. I've got masses and masses of fibre that would really make a beautiful hat and a very warm one. This is warm regardless of it being acrylic it is very warm. My next finished object are my socks that I was working on last time in the last podcast and this is Regia I think it's the design line and the yarn has been designed by Arne and Carlos of YouTube fame and it's absolutely beautiful. I love this sock. Toe up on 2.25 millimeter needles and I've actually managed, I don't know if you can see it there, yes I've managed to match up the this pattern. I had to wind off, when I'd finished the first sock, I had to wind off a small amount of what was left over, the yarn left over, to find the beginning to match how I, how I was going to knit the second sock up. So it's a lovely sock. My usual heel flap, heel flap and gusset and then up, up onto the leg. I don't like my socks too long so I always have yarn left over from I think it's a hundred gram ball so that might do as a contrast for something else. So that's that finished object, that's my third finished object. Works in progress. Um, I am still working on my Sunday cardigan by Petit Knit and after the fiasco of the first attempt where I tried to use this handspun yarn and it pretty much came out like cardboard, I've gone, up, I've gone up a needle size and then I discovered the Sunday cardigan pattern and oh it just turned out so much better, the, the whole fabric was brilliant. So on the last, the last time I tried to use this, I knew before I was even halfway down the second sleeve that I would run out of yarn. So this time I did the sleeves first. Oh, I've still got markers in here. We did the sleeves first and then started working down the body. It's absolutely, absolutely it's such a wonderful pattern. It, it's so easy to do and you your hand is held almost the whole way through. It, you couldn't go wrong. So now I am under the arms and I'm down onto the the border, bo the bottom border. So I think the pattern said a 1-1 one, one rib but I quite like 2-2, two, two, two purl, two plain. So that's what I'll be doing and I'll try it on and see how long I would like like it to be. And that sort of brings me into a purchase that we made recently. And it's this wonderful thing from, what's it called? Um, the Knitting Barber. And what it is, is a long cord, I'll show you this one, that you slip onto the end of your, your needle that you're knitting with and you just put your stitches over onto the cord I don't know what happens at the other end. I wonder if you need another 
Oh no, no, that's right. You put a knot in the other end. I'm sure that's what what the instructions said. And then you can put all your stitches onto there. The largest one of cord of this this size is 60 inches. So that's more than enough to to try your garment on without the stitches falling off. And there are two smaller cords of 30 inches if you want to try sleeves on. So they've got it covered by this. It's uh, absolutely amazing. So I shall do that once I get down a bit further onto the, the border. I'll try it on, see if it's the length I like and carry on. And a good thing about going up a needle size, I used size 6mm needles for my first attempt at a cardigan and it was awful, it was just dreadful. So now I've gone up to a 7mm seven, seven and this is Addy Turbo I believe and it's made all the difference to the fabric, the feel of the fabric. And the good thing is that I also have a ball of yarn left over. I know I will have that once I've finished the border. So I will be doing afterthought pockets and I think it will be quite easy because Kia's bot, who also does a podcast, she's a Swedish lady, um, showed you a very easy way to do an afterthought pocket if you want to, to put one in. So that's what I'll do and I'll put a mention, I'm sure I mentioned it in if not the last post podcast, maybe the second one. Um, I'll, but I'll put a note in again about Kia's how to do afterthought pockets. Very good idea. Forgot to say, the Knitting Barber Cords came from, it's a company called The Uncommon Thread and they're based in Brighton in the UK. And they have loads of colours. Some of them are out of stock, but there was plenty of the very vivid pink ones that I got. So if, if you're looking for something very useful, another useful tool, um, that's, that's brilliant. It's a good idea. My next work in progress is a pair of socks for my sister. Because she likes socks. I don't know if she's ever had a pair of hand spun socks, but anyway, I offered to make her some and this is the the yarn I dyed specially. She said she would like earthy tones, earthy tone yarn and this is the one that I dyed up. I don't know if you can see it quite as good there. Um, this is BFL with nylon and superwash. Superwash will, so no problem about pu pushing it into the washing machine. Um, I dyed this by dip dyeing the yarn first of all to get a background gradient colour and then it was done in the steam pan with my very favourite method of zigzag different colours and that gives a patterning. Oh no, it's not showing up so well. Maybe there, zigzag patterning to get different colours that come out as, as slightly striped and then little dots of toning colour on top. So this, I like this myself actually. I'll, I'll probably repeat this method and make myself some of these. So I hope she'll be happy with those. Um, they are done using the 2.25s and this is Knit Pro Zing. I love those needles, they're so colourful and my favourite way of knitting is with two, two circulars. Jacqueline, my daughter, she, she likes the nine inch circulars and I couldn't get used to them at all. Um, but I like these, these work fine for me. So that's that work in progress. Um, what else do I have that's on the go? This is another sweater for my little dog, my, my hairless dog who feels the cold. And I'm using Karen Simply Soft. 
it's a, an iron weight. It's it's not worsted. It's thicker than worsted, and it's beautifully soft and it's acrylic because he is allergic to any wool or animal fibre so he has to have an acrylic type yarn and I'm using the Puchikin pattern again by Beth Idala and this is the colourway that it's coming out as it's lovely it's absolutely beautiful and I think this will suit him so well so I've done the collar and the collar is worked on 4mm needles and the body is worked on 4.5mm needles and I'm using the, I think it's Addy Turbos. So I've done the increases for the chest area. I also added on two extra stitches because he does have a broad chest. Then you not easy to see them. I think if I put my hand in here perhaps. You do the little armholes each side and then you join in the round again and work down until it's time to split for the back portion. So that's the part that I'm on just now. I'll be working down to the tail end and then you pick up all the way around from the back round to under the chest and knit the ribbing on circular needles. So apart from this back flap down to the tail, it's pretty much all done on circular needles. And I've found that this size, he didn't, he's the, I think there's five sizes. Well, Louis has the middle size and that fits him really, really well. Next, I received a parcel the other day that I've not had time to open, it's just been quite hectic here. So I'll do a quick un unpacking at the minute. And here we go, lovely big parcel. I know who it's from, I know where it's from. But um, when you choose colours online, you're never quite sure what, what, what it's going to be that you get. Well, you know, it's the colour tone that you've asked for. But in actual fact, it could be, oh no, I was going to say it could be quite different, but this is exactly what I was looking for. This is fibre from Bingham Woolworks, and they never let us down. They're always beautiful fibre. And this is Merino, which I will spin up into, I know exactly what I'm going to use it for. It's the, I think I know, I'll have to look at my book to make sure I pronounce this properly. It's the Diggory Venn sweater and it's on Ravelry. It's a purchased pattern and I'm going to use this. It's by Isabel Kramer. It's a lovely pattern. It's self-coloured yoke all the way around um, to give you the shaping and then it's really just a one colour sweater until you get to the cuffs and the bottom of the body part and it has a little contrast pattern. It looks lovely. And also, what does it have? A pocket. So I like my pockets for just putting things in that I carry about with me. It doesn't do the sweater any good, but I'm happy. So I'm looking forward to spinning this up and also knitting that jumper. The one that I'm still, I didn't bring it down, it's upstairs. The one that I'm also still working on is the Bean and Olive by Andrea Maori. And it's progressing. Um, I'm on the, maybe the, the boring part, working down the, the body, down to the, to the hem. And I can't remember if there's actually patterning just before you work the, the ribbing at the bottom. But anyway, I'm going to put some in, just me. And then I've got the sleeves to do on that too. So hopefully, I've been doing working on that at night when I watch TV. Also in the packet was another bundle of fibre. This is the one that 
that Jacqueline chose and she wants to make a scarf out of it. This looks as though it has silk. It's mer is it merino and silk? And it's called Hedgerow. Also by Wingham's. It's in the same parcel. Um, so she wants to make a scarf pattern by Marie Green. I think that was the name. But anyway, we'll put a, a link below if it's not the right name. So that's going to be lovely. It's lovely and squishy and soft. And the colours are absolutely gorgeous. Exactly like a hedgerow. Maybe with berries and the lovely greens and tawny colour. That'll be lovely anyway. Right, so I think that's pretty much it for work in progress at the minute. Um, as I said earlier, we've had a lot of customer order to do. Um, most of it involved dyeing, um, spinning and dyeing. So there were dye colours left over. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't want too many bottles of leftover dye because you forget what you've got. So I had quite a lot of white wool um, that I'd spun up when I was less busy. And I thought, right, we'll just dye that up. We'll use our leftover dyes and see what happens. So the first one I did was this, this beautiful blend. Um, in fact, I think I've put a little, well, it's not a video because I tried to do a video of the dyeing process of this, but the camera steamed up all the time. So I managed to quickly grab a few photographs. So I'll put those up of how this was prepared and dyed. And there wasn't terribly much dye left. This is a, a sort of steely blue gray color and it was just enough to dye part of this yarn. Um, let me see if I can open it up and we'll see how. Yeah. So that was the part, the grey part was the, the one that went in first. And then as the dye exhausted, the very pale silver grey appeared. And then that left some white yarn peeping out. So that received some more leftover dye treatment and it's absolutely gorgeous. The fibre is superwash merino so it would make a lovely hat, cowl, scarf. Um, it's possibly it's not I think it's probably more a four ply weight than DK but you could use a light DK pattern to, to knit with this or crochet, crochet either, either way. So that's that one. Um, it probably will go up in our Etsy shop maybe next week. Two hanks of those. The other one was, the other dyeing that I did was fuchsia and teal. So I thought, right, we'll use that up as well. There was a slightly more of that dye because it is, they are, they're both very pigmented and strong dyes. So this is the hank we have left from that. And I have three hanks of that. They were all dyed at the same time. This is, this is not superwash, it's South American wool. And this is a DK weight. It's lovely I'll open this one up and we'll see how how very strong that colour is this this is Cabernet one of my new favourites and as it the dye exhausts it becomes less saturated and then the teal is added very strong in places and less strong in others and there were white patches left over and I thought I'm going to keep those in because I think that will lighten it up and just add a bit more interest and then I've added little it's not speckles as such it's little patches of darker colour contrast so I'm pleased with that too and as usual I would like to keep it for myself but there's a limit to how much I can keep 
so that's the dyeing at the moment. Um, we'll have a shop update next week or this week, maybe later in the week. So while all that was going on, um, knitting, dyeing, not so much dyeing, you can't really watch any programmes while you're dyeing, otherwise you're in trouble. But I have been watching in the, in the evening when I'm doing my knitting, I've been watching BBC iPlayer and it was a, a I'm not sure if it was a new programme that, that came on. But anyway, I noticed it, and it's Wolf Hall, and by Hilary Mantel, the books, the books anyway, are by Hilary Mantel, I believe there's a trilogy, but the first book is Wolf Hall, and it's pretty much about Thomas Cromwell and his rise up the ranks in Henry VIII's court, and, or really the scheming and carrying on that went in to get to getting rid of Cardinal Wolsey and the connection with Anne Boleyn and an absolutely wonderful program. I think there might have been I'm not sure three or four episodes maybe more than that. I mean it was absolutely engrossing and I also think nobody does a historical drama like the BBC. It's perfect. It's so well researched and the acting was brilliant. Damien Lewis actually played Henry VIII and he was very very good, very good indeed. And all the actors were. It was just a wonderful series altogether. I wish they would do the follow-up which I'm not sure what the follow-up one is. Something about bones. Anyway, then, having watched that, I thought, I wonder if there's anything else about, you know, that that Tudor time. And there was. There, the, other, the next programme was The Boleyns, A Scandalous Family. And once again, it's about the rise of Anne Boleyn, the scheming that went on to, for her to become queen and how she got rid of Catherine of Aragon. She was instrumental in all this Henry VIII's business, trying to get annulments, and he becomes head of the church in England. Oh, it's absolutely wonderful. And that one was actually a drama documentary. And the historians who researched it and looked into all the letters and correspondence, what a marvellous job they did. Um, to make this really come alive and make it such an enjoyable program. So I would very much recommend those two programs if you can get BBC iPlayer. Um, that's about all I've been watching really. I've sort of lost track with my supercars. I'm still on Lamborghini but I sort of I faded out with that because I thought well what's the point because these cars eventually they'll be useless unless they can come up with an electric version. Um, I don't know how appealing that would be. Um, purchases? Nothing really apart from the the Knitting Barber which has been a great purchase and of course my fibre from Wing and Wool Works. Um, trying to economise on not buying so much fibre. But I, I feel it's a losing battle. Yeah. I just can't help myself when I see a lovely colour or a lovely mixture, a lovely blend. Um, that's it. I'm doomed. Well, thank you for watching. Um, it's lovely to see you all again. And for new viewers, if you've enjoyed this programme, then please subscribe. Um, I'd love to see you back again. So take care, everybody. Um, I think things are improving. Um, I hope you enjoyed Halloween. We we didn't celebrate here. It was very, very quiet. We did see some children going about trick-or-treating. And, of course, we've had bonfire night, which was absolutely raucous. Um, we have three dogs at home. 
Two didn't bother, couldn't have cared less. And the other one, the one who was very ill, she did not enjoy it at all. So it was a struggle to get her out. Um, we were no sooner out the door than bang, crash, lights lit up the sky. So it was a quick scurry home. But anyway, take care and see you again. Bye just now. Bye.